excited about the term or the tag Hebrew, even when it cost us something. Hi, this is Barry Phillips of Timothy Tour, day number four, the tour portion, Ekef. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, Devarim, chapter number nine, begin reading with verse one. Hero Israel, you are passing over the yard in today to go in to dispossess nations greater and stronger than yourself, cities great and walled up to the heavens, a people great and tall, the descendants of the Anakim, whom you know and of whom you have heard it said, who does stand before the descendants of the of Anak? And you shall know today that Yahweh your Elohim is he who is passing over before you as a consuming fire. He does destroy them and subdue them before you. So you shall dispossess them and destroy them quickly as Yahweh has said to you. So we see this idea of passing over the Yarden. The word Ivri, I-V-R-I, Ivri, translated as Hebrew, is the term that was given to Avraham as one who was crossed over. That's what the word means, he who was crossed over. It is the root form Avar, A-V-A-R, Avar, that is being used here. So in crossing over the Yarden, Am Israel is making a final declaration to their identity. They are finally going from the slaves of Mitzrayim or Egypt and going from the lost people in the middle of the wilderness, a failed people who are dying in the wilderness, to a generation of people who are crossing over the Jordan to become possessors of their inheritance. Such are our desires to cross over the Jordan to possess the land. To do so, we have to take on the identity then of those who have crossed over. In some manner of speaking, we have already crossed over. We have crossed over from wherever it was that we were, whether it was in a denominational house of belief or perhaps a place where there was no belief whatsoever. Sometimes it was of a pagan belief. But here we are. We've crossed over from all of that, and we've come again into the Torah. Our journey is not complete. We've not reached our destiny or our destination yet. We're still on the journey. Crossing the Yarden is, in a manner of speaking, a mikvah. A mikvah meaning baptism, as it is commonly translated in our translations. It is the idea of immersion in water. In Hebraic thought, Torah understanding, to be immersed, to have a mikvah, is to change one's status from one thing to another, more often than not, from unclean to clean. Oftentimes we read the text, you shall wash or bathe your body in water. What does that mean? To be mikvahed. When a woman has come to the end of her menstrual cycle, she mikvahs. She is identifying the change of status, going from unclean to her husband to clean. When we are mikvahed or baptized in Messiah after our redemption and salvation, we are signifying not just that we have been blood-bought or redeemed or born again, although those things apply, more importantly, we're describing ourselves as dying to the old man and rising up a new man. Our status has changed. We've gone from being in league and covenant with the world and its systems to now entering into the covenant of Messiah. Here's one for you. According to Ephesians chapter 2, I encourage you to read the entirety of that chapter. We've gone from being Gentile going to being Hebrew, becoming a part of the Hebrew house of Israel, part of the covenant people of the Most High. Those who are afar off have now been brought near. So our status has changed. We're different. Now, 
This is more than ceremonial. It's more than ritual. It's more than symbolic. This is empowering to us. Let's understand why. Once Israel crosses over the Jordan, the Jordan River, then the pillar of the cloud and the pillar of fire will no longer be visible to them. They're going to have to walk more by belief than a visible sign in wonder. Water will no longer flow from the rock for them to drink. They will drink water from the wells and the streams of the land. Manna will no longer appear on the ground every morning. They will eat of the produce of the land. And then it says, once you get in there, you're going to find an enemy of the Anakim, the sons of Anak. And you're going to find cities that are walled up to Hashemayim, to the heavens. Here's our question. Does that make us anxious or excited? Are you filled with anxiety about the days that are perilous and increasingly so and rapidly coming upon us? Or are you excited? Typically, last day prophecy preachers describe to us terrible scenarios where we are chased by those who are of the system looking for us in our hideouts, trying to find our hidden bunkers, looking for us on the top of the mountains, digging through the forest, looking for us. Because, well, you know, we're the enemy. Uh, we are depicted as barely surviving, barely overcoming and hanging on. And just suddenly we hear the sound of a trumpet. Can I tell you that when you properly read through the prophets and through the book of uh, Daniel and Revelation in particular, you will find that while there is persecution and while there is a system that does indeed rise up against us, the judgments of Yah are not poured out upon us, but they are poured out upon the adversaries of Yah. Listen again to what he says in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 9. You shall know today that Yahweh, your Elohim, your Elohim, is he who is passing over before you as a consuming fire. He does destroy them and subdue you, them before you. He says, in these days, we are going to subdue them and dispossess them and destroy them quickly. The days in front of us are meant for our refinement, but also for our empowerment, our development. Yah is not looking to destroy the righteous. He is looking to grow the righteous. He is not looking to devastate us with plagues he is looking to separate those who walk uprightly and righteously from those who refuse to do so. It is those that have set themselves up for the hand of his judgment that will see sores and scourges and plagues and devastating events come upon them and the loss of all that they have. Hopefully that they will come to a place of repentance. Most will not. We are coming to the days of sifting. He is encouraging us. You're getting ready to cross over. Hold on to the identity of those who have crossed over and are crossing over, who are being mikvahed into the name and identity of Yeshua the Messiah. For it is his seal and his guard that will keep you during the days of trial, the Anakim are going to rise up. Their cities are going to be fortified. And Yah will say to us, I got this. Stand back and let me do what I'm going to do. These are not hard days, 
but glorious days. And we'll talk more tomorrow. And shalom. Thank you.